Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to quickly cover VM sizes in Azure. So I think sometimes there's a little bit of confusion about why there's all these different types and sizes of virtual machines. And it really kind of comes down to t-shirts. Um, t-shirts, we have these standard sizes, small, medium, large, whatever. We don't really focus on maybe the, the waist size, the chest size, neck. We just have these fairly equivalent combinations of measurements that make up small, medium, large, etc. But we do have specialities within that. We might have a regular fit, athletic fit, relaxed fit, sports shirts. And that's kind of like virtual machines in Azure we think about there's different focuses for different types of virtual machine. Maybe it's compute, maybe it's memory, maybe it's storage, something special. So if I, if I think about it, there, there is a host. There's a physical machine that hosts the virtual machine. Now that host itself has certain characteristics. It has certain amounts of CPU, certain amounts of memory, certain amounts of storage, certain amounts of kind of network connectivity, maybe some special things. Maybe there are some special kind of GPUs. Maybe there's certain types of kind of InfiniBand in there. So it has a certain set of performance of capacity. And then what we do is we essentially create virtual machines on one of those hosts. Now, a virtual machine has various dimensions to it. Um, often we think about, for example, well, there's kind of the, the brains, the CPU. And we really focus on cores. So we have these virtual cores for the virtual machine. And often we think about, well, how many? Is it two, four, six, eight? So there's a, a number of cores. And then there's, well, what is the type of that? Obviously, there's things like there's Intel, um, there's AMD, so there's variations. And of course, over time, if I really do think about kind of time, there might be a V2 you'll see of certain virtual machines. You'll see a V3, etc. Because over time, hardware improves. So as the hardware improves, the processes change. They get faster, they get new types of instructions. So a certain family will have a V2, a V3, a V4 to keep up with the new capabilities, the performance of um, the actually underlying hardware. Which then comes into, well, another kind of characteristic of the core is the performance. And the way we think about performance in Azure is you have something called the Azure Compute Unit, the ACU. And that's all based around the original kind of A1 virtual machine. If you jump over to the browser, we can see, well, look, the A1 has a score of 100. And then you can kind of look at, well, different families of the virtual machines, different versions, they get higher scores. Some of them have a variation because they have turbo capabilities. They can accelerate up for periods of time. Some of them, you'll actually notice there's a two to one ratio. They support hyperthreading, which is why you'll sometimes see something like the V2, the performance actually drops from the V2 to the V3, which makes no sense, except the V3 is hyperthreaded. So you're actually getting two of those for every one of the V2. So we can go and look at the ACU to work out, well, what is the actual underlying performance of that processor? Which really builds into then, well, yeah, there's also features. There's features of the processor. Obviously, there's things like instruction sets, but does it support hyperthreading? Does it support boost? So I have those capabilities when we think about performance side. Does it support things like hardware assisted virtualization? So I could run a hypervisor in the virtual machine. And then there's things like SGX. These are the secure compute enclaves. So I can do that secure computing capabilities. So we have those aspects of the virtual machine. And then we have things like memory. So here I've got my memory sticks. And memory, we, we typically just think about kind of the size. 
and you'll see that measured in the kind of GIB, the Gibby bytes, which is the true 1024 powers of two, rather than just gigabytes, which we you always think about 1024, but it's really a thousand. That's why you see GIB. And then another dimension, well, we can think about, I have storage. And the storage, there's local storage to the host. The host has a certain amount of storage inside it. And portions of that can be given to the virtual machine. So I can think about, well, there's, there's local storage. And with that, there's kind of size, there's type, is it a hard disk drive like the old A series or is it SSD pretty much everything else? There's certain performance. Performance might be IOPS, throughput, latencies. So I have those aspects to it. And then of course there's remote storage. That's what we're going to think about for all of our kind of durable persistent storage. And there I can think about, well, how many disks can I attach? These are managed disks. What is the kind of IOPS? and throughput of the VM itself, because the storage has a certain performance, the VM has a certain performance characteristic as well. What are the types of storage we support? And often you'll see this kind of S variant, a DS, an ES. The S means it can use premium storage, so the SSD-based types of virtual machine. Then, of course, we have network. So then I can think about, hey, connectivity between things. And when I think about the network, I might think about, well, number of NICs and the bandwidth. Once again, the virtual machine will support a number of network interface cards that can have a number of IP configurations. And then what's the overall throughput? And then there's just special. So we have these extra special capabilities that could be gpus hey i want to do um, visualization i want to do ai deep learning some sort of compute where nvidia sort of cuda instruction sets tesla cards will bring benefit to that i have things like high performance compute so here i want super high connectivity between vms so we have things like infiniband and there are certain VMs that have kind of NVMe storage, very, very high performance local storage that it can use. So we have all these kind of performance characteristics that I care about. And at different times, different workloads, I might have a greater focus on one dimension than another. So that's why you have all these different types of virtual machines. So you have ones that are more general purpose. I have ones that are compute optimized with so a bigger ratio of CPU to storage and memory and other things. I have memory optimized, storage optimized, ones that are GPU, ones that are high performance. And I've got the, the list in detail. You can go and click on any of these to go and see the details. But the point is, even within one of these types, let's say I pick the D series, within those, there's different small, medium, large of those. So, hey, I can pick the number of CPUs, which will relate to a certain amount of memories, temp, local storage, number of data drives, and it all kind of goes up very proportionally and taking up a bigger proportion of the underlying host resource. So, what are those kind of types? If they're all the different dimensions, well, there's, there's kind of general purpose. That's a good overall balance of all of the different types of resource. So that's things like the B series, and B is burstable. One of those CPU capabilities, I get a lower amount of CPU, but it can actually burst up to 100% if I bank some credits. So there's a B series, there's things like the D, V3, and V4. So again, a good overall balance. And then there's the original A series, though I don't think anyone really touches the A series anymore. And if I think I have kind of compute optimized, so this is that bigger ratio of CPU to the others. So that's the, there's various F types within there. Then I can think about, well, there's my memory optimized. So if I'm more focused, hey, I need more memory than CPU, maybe it's saying kind of maybe a database type workload. Well, there's things like there's various versions of E, 
there's various versions of the M, kind of the, the monster size, and kind of the DV2 was considered a memory optimized. Then we have storage optimized. And the storage optimized, this is the L series. And the L series is where I also get things like that NVMe local storage I can use. And it can even burst up to higher amounts of storage throughput. So I can use the storage um, specialized there. Then there's the GPU. Now this is the N series. But even within the N series, there are specialist versions of that. I can think there's like an NC for compute optimized workloads. There's ND for kind of deep learning. So we have those deep learning type AI capabilities. And then there's kind of V for the visualization. And there's again, there's different versions of those. There's ones that's focused around VDI type visualization scenarios. So I have those specialized ones. And then finally, there's kind of the high performance compute. And that's the H series. And once again, there's different types of H series um, available to me. So you have these different focus types of virtual machines, depending on your, your different requirements, what I want greater ratios of. And within all of those, I can pick the exact size I want for my workload. So that's kind of a, a super quick summary of why we have different types of virtual machines in Azure. And then you go and pick the size that exactly meets your needs. I hope this was useful. If it was, uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Till next time, take care.